I want to I want to make our party's position very clear with regard to the position of the leader of the opposition. Yeah. As you as you said, the party in opposition that has the largest number of seats is entitled to the post of leader of the opposition. There is no question on that. The question is, there are two questions before this house today. First question is, is UPFA a party in opposition? I say with respect that the head of the UPFA is the head of the government and the head of the executive, the head of the cabinet. Not only that, not only that, he also holds, he also holds three portfolio in the cabinet. In such an instance, our position is that when a member of the UPFA and that too the leader of the UPFA is in the cabinet, the head of the cabinet and holds three portfolio in the cabinet, another member of the UPFA cannot be the leader of the opposition. That is one. Secondly, from the issue that has been raised by the leader of the house today, Article 9913 of the Constitution very clearly stipulates that if a member of parliament resigns or ceases to be a member of the political party through which he was elected to parliament, then his seat in parliament, he, he vacates his seat in parliament upon the expiration of one month from ceasing to be a member of that political party. The question has arisen as to whether those who resign from the SLFP have also ceased to be members of the UPFA by that very fact of resigning from the SLFP or by taking membership in another political party, whether they have so lost their membership in the SLFP and consequently lost their membership in the UPFA as well. Now that is a question of fact which needs to be ascertained. It can't be something that is covered up and kept because it concerns the composition of parliament as to whether there are strangers in the house here today. I take the view that there are strangers in the house here today and they must be asked to uh, vacate the chamber. But if there is a question of fact to be ascertained, surely the parliament is competent to ascertain that fact and we will be moving for an appointment of a select committee to inquire into that question of fact to ascertain as to whether some members, some who claim to be members and who have entered this chamber today have in fact lost their membership in parliament because that's a crucial question as to the composition of this parliament itself and I'll be moving for appointment of a select committee. And for these two reasons that I just enumerated, I uh, appeal to the speaker that the position of the leader of the opposition ought not to be changed until you take these two matters into consideration. We also wish to address the speaker in writing within a couple of days, placing our position in this respect. This is a, on a matter of principle, not because anybody wants to hang on to any uh, seat, but on a matter of principle, it is on a it is on a matter of principle that we even were forced to go to court when, on wrong advice, uh, this parliament was even dissolved, purportedly, and had been held by the Supreme Court by uh, unanimous judgment by seven judges that that was a violation of the constitution by no lesser person than the president of this country. So we don't want the constitution violated any further. If some members have ceased to be members of parliament, they must withdraw from this chamber now. And if they refuse to do that, if they refuse to do that, this parliament is perfectly competent to inquire into that question of fact. And a select committee of parliament can go into that. Until such time, I 
earnestly request the speaker that the position of the leader of the opposition not be changed. Thank you. On that case, honourable honourable uh, member, you have to give me a written submission because I have to take a decision fairly early. Because by Friday, I'll give my ruling on this. Uh, on the Ajibit Perra, then after that, 